So I want to start off um, tonight, right before Passover, with a story about um, a Jewish guy from London. His name was Hyman Goldfarb. I don't think he gets more Jewish than that. Now, Hyman Goldfarb was a very charitable person and it was brought to the attention of the Queen, all the wonderful things that he was doing for the people of, the, of England, and she wanted to make him a knight and to promote him to, you know, to a to high position. So the only problem was that Hyman wanted to refuse the honor and he told his friend Herb, um, Herb, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna become a knight. He says, why not? He says, because the way it works is the Queen <coughs> takes out her sword and she touches you on the left shoulder and then she touches you on the right shoulder and then you have to say something in Latin. And then you become a knight. And I don't know any Latin, and I'm certainly not in the mood of learning any Latin. So Herb tells his friend Hyman, and says, you know what, you think the queen knows Latin? She doesn't know Latin either. Why don't you just say something in Hebrew? So he says, well, I don't really know much Hebrew because, you know, I went to a little bit of a Hebrew school when I was a kid, and I only know two things. I know Heveinu shalom aleichem, you know, Heveinu shalom, right? I know that, <laughs> and, but, but she might know that also, because it's really famous. I also know, I also know one other thing, I know, manishtana halayla hazeh mikol halaylos. I remember when I was a little child, I used to ask my father, manishtana halayla hazeh, I don't pass overnight. I used to ask him that question. So anyway, so he says, great idea, and that's what I'm going to say. So they're all lining up in front of Buckingham Palace and the Queen has all the knights lined up there and she goes from one to the other and everything goes well and she taps them on the left shoulder and on the right shoulder they say something in Latin and all is good, hunky dory, hallelujah. She gets up to him, she gets up to Hyman, she taps him on the left shoulder, taps on the right shoulder and she gestures to say something in Latin. So he says, Manishtana halayla hazeh, we call halaylos. She turns to her husband, she says, Why is this night different than all the other nights? <laughs> <laughs> so, I remember that joke. Yes, so... Oh, God. Now... <laughs> see? Anyways, just to leave a, a real, uh, a short thought before Passover, with a, with a few minutes left, is of course we know that on Passover night, the cornerstone is asking the Manishtana the four questions, of why this night is different from all the other nights. But there's another component that is just as important, and that is, it's even biblically um, mentioned, and that is to tell over the story of the exodus from Egypt. Not just to eat the matzah and eat the mar and to do the symbolic things, but we're required to say over the story. And the question comes up is, why does it have to be a story? Why can't we just thank God, go over the bullet points? What's the significance of a story? You know, normally there's a joke that goes around that all Jewish holidays is they tried to kill us, they didn't succeed, so we eat. Right? You're right. That, that's what we do. But what's the, what's the significance of story? And the answer really is, is that if you ever heard a really good storyteller, a storyteller has the ability to tell you the same story over and over and over and over again and make you cry and laugh, even though you know it's going to end all good and it's going to be really a happy ending and they lived happily ever after. But they have the ability to draw out those tears and they could really make you cry over and over again, much like a song. A person could listen to their favorite song a thousand times and you still want to hear it. And you know the song by heart, you know exactly all the arrangements, the whole orchestration, and yet you want to hear it again and again and again and again. So the significance of a story is not only to focus on a happy ending, but it's also to focus on the sad beginnings or the hardships that were in between. Why is that? Well, Passover night, is the night, is the cornerstone of our faith. It's the night where we draw all of our Jewish faith comes from Passover. Whenever we say Kiddush, we always say, Zecher Litzias Mitzrayim, right? We're always remembering our exodus from Egypt. That's the night of Passover. So I think the lesson is, is that faith is not only about the happy endings, but faith is about believing that everything that God does to us, even the parts that are very hard, and the hardships, and the parts of the stories that are low and make us cry, Again and again, those hardships is what really builds us. And we have to have faith that these are not things that God gives us to stumble us and to, and to trip us up and then we just pray and hope that the salvation will come. We have to celebrate those parts as well. In fact, um, Egypt was called, in the sages called Egypt, the Kor Habarzal, the iron furnace. 
Because what does an iron furnace does? It takes a piece of weak metal and it makes it very strong. So the strength that the Jewish people have, like Mark Twain said, that the Jewish people are the only nation that we've survived everyone else and we will survive all the way until Mashiach comes. And, and um, that only comes from us enduring those hardships, celebrating those hardships. So this Passover night, not only you'll have a good joke to say at the Seder, but hopefully we'll remember that faith means to celebrate the good parts of life and the bad parts and to work them through and to tell over the story of our exodus from Egypt with all that vigor, the good parts, the bad parts. You should have a very happy Pesach and we'll see everybody in two weeks.